Welcome to Android with Java Part 2, wherein we build a Twitter client. And you can see the there in the middle of my Android emulator screenshot, there's the, the icon of the app we'll be building. So this is Part 2. The first part was developing Android applications with Java. And as Beth said, you can get that on O'Reilly. But I wanted to go over <coughs> um, a little bit of what we talked about in the first part. So if anybody hasn't yet bought that, you can kind of get an idea of what's in there. Or um, if you want to just do a quick catch up here, a couple links down here at the bottom of this slide to uh, some Android documentation, which would be pretty good for you to review anyway and to have in your bookmarks as you go through Android development. So you can kind of uh, look up anything that, that we go over here quickly if you want to get a quick refresher. So we it, it was set up pretty much like this, this class is going to be set up. We went through five weeks of of building a task manager application for Android, which is a nice, simple uh, application that would let you store a list of tasks and kind of check those tasks off, off as you get done with them. And then we made it more interesting as we went along by adding things like location so that you could put a location or an address on a task. And then at the, in the final class, we, we set up to uh, um, let, let the, uh, the device filter all the tasks that it knew about by act, by the uh, nearness, by the proximity of, of the task to where the device was currently at. So the first week we just um, kind of got our um, got our Android legs, and we started out with uh, learning about activities. And activity, as a refresher here, is kind of like a controller in the the classic model view controller pattern that we're probably mostly familiar with. It's uh, the thing that controls the, the view that you see on the screen, and, and, and there's pretty much only ever one activity in the forefront of your Android device as you're running applications. So an activity is like a screen's, screen's worth of data. It controls everything that you see on one screen, and they're kind of central to Android development. And here's a reference link that you can look at to, to uh, refresh yourself about activities or come up to speed on activities. And then in week two, we went a little bit further by working with a list view, which are pretty central to uh, to showing like a list a list of items in a easily scrollable list on a on a screen. And we talked about how it was possible to create custom views for each item in the list. So we have a custom view that we made that uh, showed just the title of a task and then a checkbox so that you could tap on the the item to check off saying that you were done with a with one of the tasks in the list and you can look at more information at this link here and we also talked about a list view activity which is an activity that uh, makes it very easy to work with lists then in week three we uh, didn't really change anything about what you see in the application but instead of just storing all the tasks that the user input into the application in memory where they would go away if the phone was rebooted or the app was reinstalled or anything like that. Uh, we talked about how to save data locally in the uh, the local SQLite database that Android gives you and the APIs that are available there. And we talked about uh, migrating the, uh, the database that's local uh, through a couple different uh, changes throughout the class so that uh, you can as you upgrade your user's um, application, you can change their local database to the way that your current version needs it to be, which was an interesting topic. And uh, by the way, the, f the forums for this are still open. I think we can, we can maybe get the link for the forums up later. Um, there was a little bit of discussion about that migration that continued on after the class, and that was one of the interesting topics that was up there on the forums. Then in week three, we started to get into more interesting, at least to the eyes, um, parts of the Android SDK and showing a map makes this look a little bit more like an interesting application without much of a development cost. It's pretty easy to work with maps in Android. Uh, we talked about the map view and how you can control that a bit from your activity as you host a view on, your, on, your, uh, on an activity. And then we talked about the map activity activity class which lets you work really easily with maps on the view and we uh, did things like put an annotation that little red dot on a map our own little custom view which shows a certain location on the map 
and we work with the Android APIs for location and addresses to look up a certain address that you could then attach to a task. And then in week five, uh, we went on to actually finding the location of the device as the device reports it, and uh, and then we went on to filter all the all the tasks that the the task manager currently knew about to uh, just show the ones that were close so that you could go and work on finishing whatever task you wanted to finish that was close to you right now. And that was a pretty good set of features um, from the Android SDK that we went through during those week, those uh, five weeks, but we're going to go through a whole other set in this, in this class. Um, it's it's kind of like we're going to be covering a, another part of the SDK, so in that sense it's not really more advanced than what we went through in that first class. It's, it's kind of like filling out more of what we know, but in another sense we're going to be going over a few more interesting topics that are kind of more advanced programming techniques, like dealing with, for instance, threads. But to uh, um, kind of give us something to, to, to uh, make this whole set of uh, features and functionality that we'll be talking about cohesive, we're going to be building a Twitter application throughout this class, which I thought people would find interesting. And you can never have too many Twitter clients, as the market has shown. So these are some of the subjects that we're going to be going over. Let's go over these kind of more in depth in a few slides here. But first of all, let's talk about Twitter. Hopefully everybody knows what Twitter is. And if you don't, if you're just getting back to Earth from, say, like a deep space exploration uh, mission or something like that, uh, Twitter is a microblogging service. That's that's kind of a term that they came up with. It's a way to just sort of say in a very small 140 character chunk of text what you're doing or what's going on, um, what's... Uh, what's up in your world and you can follow people and and, and uh, listen to what they're saying too and um, it's gotten pretty big lots of people use it lots of businesses use it there's a lot of people that are interested in what's what it's uh, what it means for communication for your business and for you personally and all those kinds of things um, but it's pretty easy to sign up for it and and it's a great little application to build too. So we're going to make a Twitter application throughout this class. So you'll need to have a Twitter account. So um, some of the things that we'll be doing in this application, um, we're going to be dealing with how to sign in to Twitter uh, safely without storing a password in the, into the uh, application, which is um, something that Twitter is kind of really pushing developers on its platform to do. And then we'll be loading the tweets, as people call them, or the home timeline, as Twitter calls it, um, for uh, based on the user that you just signed in as. And then later on, we'll be posting tweets, and uh, and then after that, posting photos to uh, TwitPic, which is kind of a service that works alongside Twitter, which will host your photos and then post a tweet from its service. So that's kind of the bare bones. Um, but it's still a nice set of functionality. It's pretty actually a useful application, and and if you go search the Android Marketplace right now, you can get an example of it uh, on your Android device. Uh, just search for Otweet, and you should be able to find it and install it and play around with it a little bit. So let's kind of talk about what we're going to be doing each one of the weeks. Um, the first week, we're going to be talking about the simple simplest thing we can do which is signing into Twitter which turns out to be not quite as simple as it sounds uh, Twitter and uh, a lot of other applications out on the web are kind of pushing this new standard called OAuth and in fact Twitter in June is going to be deprecating um, basic authentication as a way to sign in to its API um, basically what that means is basic authentication is a way that you just send the username and password of the user if you're a third-party application like a, an Android app using a, a server-based application like Twitter. Um, you'll just send along the user's credentials, their username and password with each call that you make. And even though you're using HTTPS or something, some way of encrypting the that information that's still kind of um, maybe off-putting to the user because they have to put in their password to your application and they don't know what uh, that's there's a little bit of a trust issue there 
perhaps, and um, OAuth is a way to solve that. So we're going to be talking about how to sign in using OAuth to the Twitter service. Uh, we're going to be using, instead of writing our own service layer in Java, we're going to be using an excellent Twitter library called Twitter for J. And in this first week, we'll be um, using Twitter for J to do the, the OAuth part alone. And um, we'll be signing in, the user will be signing in to Twitter using a web view, using a uh, web page on the Twitter, on, on Twitter servers. And so we're going to talk about how you use a web view and something called a web view client to manage a user's interaction with a web page inside of your application. Week two, once, we, once we've signed in, then we'll be loading the user's uh, home timeline. And that'll put it, we'll put that into a list view, so we're going to be using list view right away. And we'll also be talking about a little, little bit more interesting advanced features of a list view. Um, we'll be talking about headers and footers on a list view, which are um, uh, sort of like list items, except they don't store data. They store like controls that fit into the, to the scrolling list view. And then we'll start talking about concurrent programming, which is a really important topic in any kind of user interface, um, anything with a UI that you are building with uh, and that you're programming to. Um, because, um, well, well, we'll talk about that more, but basically the user experience can degrade fairly quickly if you're not doing important long-running applications on threads. So we'll be talking about how to do that in Android development. And then in week three, We'll uh, modify our application so you can tweet from the app, uh, we'll, which will mean we'll need to add a, a few different views um, and the activities that go along with them. So we'll have a menu that will allow the user to navigate through the application. And then we'll be using a, a, a great class that was introduced into, I believe, the 1.6 SDK called Async Task, which makes it super simple to break off sort of background job background task type um, things and uh, sort of let uh, Android deal with the thread pooling and stuff like that and all the more complex threading issues. So you can just say, run this work in the background and tell me when it's done. And uh, we'll be switching over from using threads to using that async task. And then we'll be posting tweets as well. Then in week four, we'll start to make the app look nice, which is harder than it looks in Android development. There's things that are a little bit different than you expect. It's not it's not like um, any other um, styling that you've done, most likely. Um, we'll be going through creating themes, uh, and what themes are, and how to add styles to your themes, and uh, what goes into making styles. And then we'll look at selectors, which, by the way, are not CSS selectors. They're a different kind of thing and uh, using selectors and XML graphics to style things. And then we'll be talking about designing for multiple screens, which is something that becomes more and more important as there becomes um, a, a greater market of devices of all shapes and sizes. So that'll be some interesting stuff. And then in week five, we'll be using uh, the uh, TwitPic for J library to make it easy for us to post pictures to the twitpic.com service and um, we'll be getting photos off of the library or the camera and so we'll, we'll work with uh, getting uh, local media from the Android app and then posting that up onto the web and then we'll have a fairly feature rich although simple uh, Twitter client that you'll um, be proud to have worked on. It'll look nice too. <laughs>